Hi students, today we will discuss another lesson prescribed in your complementary course paper, Narratives of Resistance. And the lesson is a memoir by K. Saraswati Amma named Life in My View. This is actually taken from her collection Saraswati Ammayude Samburna Kritikal and it was uh, published by DC Books Kotem in 1995. Now this is actually written in Malayalam and we read the English version translated by J. Devika. Okay. So, uh, this is the memoir prescribed for your study and uh, we'll discuss it very closely. But K. Saraswati Amma is considered as the pioneer of feminist literature in Malayalam. And she is considered as the first feminist writer from Kerala. Her writings appeared during the 1940s but she was largely and intentionally disregarded by the male pantheon of writers in Malayalam. And it was very recently that Saraswati Amma has been noticed and recognized for her unique approach to writing. The critic Nancy James points out that, it's a quote, in the entire history of women's writing in Kerala, Saraswati Amma's is the most tragic case of the deliberate neglect of female genius. So this was a quotation by Dr. John C. James, a famous Malayalam critic. And this is her comment on uh, Saraswati Amma. Saraswati Amma has been neglected. Her writings have been neglected. And a complete explication of her genius, of the female genius of the first a feminist writer from Kerala that was not acknowledged during her times. It was only during the recent times that her works were explored, discussed, debated and appreciated by writers. Okay, so now we'll uh, have a close look at who is Saraswati Amma, what, what was her uh, family uh, her biography, her upbringing and everything, okay? Please take lecture notes as you listen. So, as uh, we already said, Saraswati Amma is considered the first feminist writer from Kerala. And she was born in 1919 in Kundam Pura. Kundampura, a place in Trivandrum, and she was born to an upper class family. She received a bachelor degree in Malayalam, Malayalam language, and she worked as a teacher in a school after finishing her graduation. And in a move considered very controversial at her time, she did not marry. Okay, she never married. Then after that, she secured a government job. So before that, she was working as a teacher in a school. And after, she secured a government job. And uh, there was, when she started writing, there was fierce criticism. She had to face fierce criticism from her fellow writers and critics but in spite of all those criticisms 
she managed to publish a novel named prema bhajanam which means the loved one prema bhajanam then she also published several volumes of short stories a collection of essays uh, like it was called purushanmar illatha lokam a world without men okay and she also uh, that was a collection of essays and purushan marilata loga and she also published a drama uh, named devadudi which means messenger of god so all these were published in malayalam it was during the 1940s that she published these works and when you look at the themes of her works most of her works discuss the status of women in society and women's liberation especially in the background of kerala so you have to remember that it was a time when such things or such debates and discussions were not uh, encouraged uh, it was not uh, discussed in public so she talked about the emotional intellectual and the social independence of women okay she talked about the emotional intellectual and social independence of women and then in 1958 she published her last book which was called chola marangal chola marangal which means shady trees and after the publication of this book she virtually disappeared from the literary world okay she remained uh, single throughout her life and she lived in a in an isolated house uh, she was a very extrovert person she used to love speaking and interacting with people she was very bold in her opinions and she also freely interacted with men but all these uh, qualities like extroverted nature bold opinions and her free interactions with men these were unusual in her time and especially for an unmarried woman so it also gained her uh, much criticism hmm? and the greatest crisis in her life was the death of her nephew uh, because she lived uh, with a with her elder sister's son his name was suku and she had a very deep emotional attachment with this child but the untimely death of suku shocked her very much uh, as she had considered him as her own son and uh, she stopped writing after early 60s and lived the last years of her life as a recluse so the importance of saraswati amma was that she established without doubt that women also had the potential of intellectual thinking okay women had the potential of intellectual thinking so when her contemporary writers wrote about hunger poverty and other revolutionary ideas saraswati amma discussed gender prejudices and discriminations okay she talked about gender prejudices and discriminations and about the hypocrisies that surrounded her okay uh, she at many times she even uh, criticizes the themes that are often dealt with when men talk about women she says that women were 
supposed to talk or women were only portrayed uh, in themes as simple as Radha Krishna love. Okay, the men folk prohibited any intellectual discussions from a woman. Women were always uh, very subservient, very soft, uh, lovable, uh, chaste, uh, pure, innocent. All these qualities were attributed to women. And it is about such an image of women that we used to get from many writings by male writers. They did not talk about or represent women as an intellectual being capable of thought, capable of reason, capable of thinking. Okay, so it is this that uh, Saraswati Amma criticizes. Fine, and uh, she fought against such gender constructions and roles laid down by the patriarchal society. And very interesting thing to note here is that she did not criticize the men alone, the male writers alone or the men in society alone for the subservience of women. But she also criticized the women who behaved according to the set norms of the patriarchal society. Okay. Purishan Mare Matra, less regular in any Adisha Martha Nadalo, Alang Lavarka, Itaram Uru a role, roles attributed in the Purishan Matka Matra, Lab Uru a role or other, Pakshe, and then even Strigal Polum, Palas Strigal, the Jane of the Dada, Auru Strigal, Ingeni Arikanam, Angani Arikanam, Alangilangana, or Kachirikam, Badilla, Langan, the Vidam, Badilla. Even women dictated that for women. She criticizes. Okay. And uh, you see that she tried to demolish the essential Sarvam uh, Sahaya our image on the law. The Sarvam Sahada, all enduring image of an Indian woman. That is what she was trying to demolish. Our image in Indian women context and Western context, image of the angel in the house in the Barnator image on the angel in the house. Other Kaventi Patmore in the Barnator writer Kondavanaru image and the Madevidate Auru Sarvam Sahaya Padivartaya. ഐഡിയോളജീസ്ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ്രൂഹർക്സ്ഡ്രൂഹർക്സ്ഡ്രൂഹർക്സ്ഡ്രൂഹർക്സ്ഡ്രൂഹർ